Learning to code is a difficult and at times overwhelming journey. It feels like there are a billion things you need to learn and the minute you feel like you've actually mastered something, it becomes outdated. There were times when I even questioned if coding really was for me because there were concepts that took so long to grasp. It's as if everyone else had this intuition for programming that I didn't have. But as it turns out, I was making the process a lot harder than it really needed to be. My name is Catherine and I have nearly nine years of working as a software developer Developer. And in this video, I want to share with you some of the mistakes that I made when I was learning to code so that maybe you can avoid these pitfalls and learn a lot more efficiently. With web development in particular, there's always a hot new tech stack or framework and the options are endless. Everyone's always asking what they should be learning and which skills are going to have the highest ROI. Personally, if I were to start to learn to code again, I wouldn't be spending all that time stressing about what the best framework to learn is. I was reading this book by Morgan Housel called Same As Ever, and the basic premise is that the only constant in life is change, and change is virtually impossible to predict despite what people on YouTube will say. This is essentially the case when it comes to web development. We have no idea which frameworks are going to be popular in the future. No one truly knows what kind of impact AI is going to have in the next decade. There's people that say AI is going to take all software developer jobs within the next five years and people saying that there's no way it's going to happen in our lifetime and both sides sound equally confident. That being said, there are computer science and programming concepts that will almost always be useful regardless if you're going for interviews or you, you're using them for a job or both. These fundamental transferable skills will give you the most bang for your buck. If you master these concepts, it doesn't matter as much which framework is trending and which one is going out of style because you're going to be able to pick them up a lot faster. Not to mention, the work becomes a lot more rewarding when you actually understand what the heck you're doing. Concepts like data structures and algorithms, systems design, writing good tests, design patterns, they're always going to be useful regardless of what's trending because those skills are transferable. This is a hot take, but even if you learn a dying language or framework, if you master the underlying concepts, it's not necessarily a waste of time. For example, one of the first languages that I learned was PHP and you can laugh all you want, but one, it was very beginner friendly, so it helped me stay motivated. And two, it helped me learn other object oriented programming languages down the line like Java and Ruby. The next point I want to make is that everyone learns differently. Imagine you're learning JavaScript and you see this. The promise object represents the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation and its resulting value. Whew. This can look intimidatingly complex and discouraging to someone new to JavaScript. To this day, I'm still intimidated when I read API documentation and there's so much technical jargon that I don't understand. Some people learn really well by skimming online or reading and I now know that I learn best through watching videos and going through examples. So if you're like me and you don't understand things you read right away, don't immediately jump to the conclusion that programming is too hard or you're not smart enough to understand it. As soon as I watched a few YouTube videos on JavaScript promises, I couldn't believe how simple the concept really was. So before you start telling yourself these stories about how you can't understand programming concepts, keep in mind that both the medium and the quality of the instruction plays a massive role in whether or not you learn something. There's nothing wrong with watching a series or two if you're just starting to learn a new framework or a new language. But passively watching or reading information is actually one of the most inefficient ways to learn and retain information. Tutorials will teach you the information and the syntax, but if you really want the information to solidify and you want to understand and think like an engineer, you need to find ways to apply these concepts to your own projects or real world applications. I came to this realization when I was watching a series on React hooks. I remember finishing the entire series and I feel like I understood everything that was said in the videos. But as soon as I started trying to work on an actual React project, I was like a deer in headlights. 
while I understood the syntax on a surface level, I didn't always recognize when were the best times to use them and what were the downsides of using a certain React hook. I only knew how to apply them in the very narrow context of that particular tutorial that I watched. It's only after I got a lot of practice implementing them in different scenarios with different types of real world data did I start to recognize patterns and see when I should be using a certain hook like use effect or use context. These are obviously just examples, but you get what I mean. Here's why so many of us fall into this tutorial hell. It's because it's easy. It's comfortable. You're watching someone else code and you follow along by typing exactly what they're typing on screen. You barely even need to think and there isn't really much of a risk of failure. Failure threatens our ego and it feels bad and so we do everything in our power to avoid it. In the short term, this feels really good. We get a dopamine hit because we feel like we learned a bunch of new syntax and we are deluded into thinking that we learned a lot more than we actually did. What worked for me is watching one tutorial series on a language or a framework that I'm trying to learn. And as I'm watching it, I test myself on what I've learned the day before and I actively try to apply it to a project that I'm working on. So stop preparing to code and just start. Instead of just watching tutorials, try something that's a little bit more hands-on. And that's why today's sponsor, Brilliant, is the perfect way to start learning new courses and skills in only 15 minutes a day. I've been using Brilliant on my own to learn new skills and to freshen up my knowledge on topics that I was taught in the past. And I find their learning approach much more useful because of their guides and the ability to see my code in action. Just recently, I finished their updated course on how large language models work, which helped me answer some questions that I had on LLMs and also to satisfy my own curiosity of wanting to know more about LLMs that are everywhere these days. The way that I can easily change a slider or two and see different results in real time really helped me grasp the fundamental concepts and I definitely feel like I have a better understanding of LLMs. If you enjoy learning new skills, have 15 minutes a day to spend learning anywhere and on the go, I would recommend signing up for Brilliant for free for a full 30 days using brilliant.org slash Catherine Lee or by scanning the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. One of the worst feelings in the world is when you're sitting in class and the instructor asks a really challenging question that you have no clue as to what the answer is. To make matters worse, there's a bunch of students that appear to grasp the concept right away and seem to possess this intuition that you lack. It's even worse when this happens at work. There's been countless times where I'd be banging my head against a wall for hours and I'd finally have the courage to ask another engineer to take a look at it and they figure it out within minutes. You start thinking to yourself and questioning yourself. Am I not cut out for this? Why are they so much smarter than me? I am too dumb for this career. Let me just assure you right away that everyone feels this way at one point or another. I feel like this on a weekly basis and there's a reason why imposter syndrome is so rampant among software engineers. I've actually been on the other side of this scenario as well when I was helping a junior engineer. After I helped them solve their problem, they asked me how I fixed an issue fairly quickly that they've been dealing with for nearly an hour. And the reason is simple. I've seen that bug happen before several times. It was simply the case that I've experienced this before, not that I was more talented or intelligent. People mistake lack of experience with a lack of intelligence all the time, but the two could not be more different. If you really struggle with imposter syndrome like I do, I highly recommend you check out the book Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck. It's only after I internalized the belief that programming is simply a group of skills that I and anybody can get better at with enough time and effort. And there's nothing magical about it that I became much more empowered to tackle the challenges and try new things. I noticed a common denominator among the best software developers I've worked with, and that is their high frustration tolerance. From the outset, they accept that things might go wrong, it won't work right away, and that is okay. In fact, 
It might even be good because it means that they're learning something new. The best engineers that I worked with have all had so much grit and they're willing to tolerate uncertainty and dive into an area that they are not familiar with and they're willing to struggle with problems without getting too frustrated or giving up. Everyone goes through this and the ability to regulate your emotions when these frustrations come up is a critical skill. Rather than seeing unexpected problems as obstacles, the best engineers understand that it's simply a part of the job. They factor in time for dealing with unexpected issues when estimating scope for a particular feature. When I started coding, I remember I would get so frustrated when I was working on a project and all of a sudden, Git doesn't work as expected, the API suddenly changed, the server won't start, or some other nonsense. One of the best mindset hacks that I've adopted that's made learning programming a little less stressful is accepting that it is going to be difficult. The fact that learning to code is difficult and not a lot of people are willing to tolerate this kind of difficulty is one of the reasons why tech salaries are so high. It's what makes learning to code so valuable. In fact, these days, if I'm working on a project or doing a job where there is absolutely no discomfort or failure, I might actually see that as a sign that I'm not challenging myself enough. A lot of you are going to sleep on this one, but in my opinion, this is one of the most underrated hacks. Ali Abdul has said that an hour in the morning is worth two after 3 p.m. I would even go as far as saying that an hour of uninterrupted deep work after a full night of rest and some exercise is worth two, three, four times an hour after 3 p.m. Just think about how productive you are the first hour of coding versus the fourth, fifth, sixth. After all, programming is very much a cognitively demanding task and it's not like folding laundry where your level of output remains pretty steady over time. Rather than trying to brute force your way to productivity by coding for 12 hours a day, a more effective strategy could just simply to focus uninterrupted for four to six hours and spend the rest of the time recharging, getting some sleep and exercise so that you can increase the quality and leverage of those hours. Cal Newport, who's written some of my favorite books, has said that people can only deep work for up to four hours a day. Now, I don't know where he got that exact figure from, but personally, I find that four to five hours of deep focus on a really mentally intensive task seems to be the upper limit for me as well. By using the rest of the time to recharge and sleep, or even just do less mentally challenging work, like answering emails or going to meetings, you can dramatically improve how productive you are during those critical critical four to six hours. Not to mention being in the flow for four to six hours and having time to actually live your life outside of work is so much more sustainable and enjoyable than trying to grind for 12 hours a day. There's a ton of evidence out there that says even a little bit of exercise increases your ability to learn. Speaking from personal experience, if I'm stressed out over a bug, just going outside briefly for a walk or a run immediately makes me more relaxed and ready to tackle the problem once I get back to it. If you can't do that, sometimes just even leaving the problem alone for a period of time and coming back to it will give you a fresh perspective and new ideas on how to solve it. If you found this video helpful, I recently did another video that's pretty similar on my biggest regrets in my career. So go check that one out and I will see you over there. Bye.